when I was a kid, I was walking with my mom and we walked past this frozen pond. And I freaked out. I was like, mom, are the fish okay? Like, did anybody take care of the fish? Like, they shouldn't be frozen. Like, did somebody like take them out and like put them somewhere warm? And my mom said like, no, don't worry. Like only the surface is going to be frozen, but the bottom of the pond is gonna be like around four degrees Celsius and the fish are completely fine down there. And I kind of just accepted that because it's something my parents said, but I didn't really understand it because I had this like rough understanding that warm things are always going up and like cold things are going down. That's how hot air balloons work. And um, I then in high school had this chemistry class where we learned about, you know, the crystal structure of water and how, you know, um, H2O interacts and forms, you know, these complex structures that will therefore result in, you know, water at four degrees Celsius having like the largest density and there was always being at the bottom of the pond. And so that really brought it home for me of how we can look at a molecular structure and we can look at their interactions to understand, you know, a fairly complex process like why is the lake frozen on the top and not frozen at the bottom. And you know, throughout my education, I came to learn more and more of how we can understand human life and disease and medicine you know, in terms of molecular structures interacting. My name is Daniel Recker. I'm a Swiss National Science Foundation postdoctoral fellow here at the Koch Institute and a collaborator at the Brigham and Women's Hospital. I'm from Germany originally. Um, I studied computer science there. Um, spent my first 20 years of my life over there and then decided I want to transition into computational biology and bioinformatics. So I moved to Switzerland and uh, did my master's and my PhD at ETH Zurich in the pharmaceutical science department. We did a simulation of the anti-cancer drug serafinib and we noticed that it would form these really interesting nanostructures uh, through interact the drug molecules interacting with each other. And so we were really intrigued by that and we said maybe we can do some microscopy to see if this was actually what's happening in the real world. And um, so we used transmission electron microscopy and uh, made an image of serafinib in water. And it turns out, you know, it's forming very similar nanostructures to the ones we had predicted on the computer. So to, you know, really bring this point across that the simulation was an accurate representation of reality we thought, why don't we just like juxtapose them, put them right next to each other um, to, you know, really highlight how the simulation and the real world are, you know, uh, corresponding towards each other. One thing we're really interested in is, you know, m using machine learning and modeling to understand, you know, the, how the drug behaves as soon as it enters the body, as well as what the body would do to the medication. So the project that you know led to the creation of this image is really you know concerning the effect of what happens to a drug if it's in solution because as it turns out you know like the the molecule will start to interact with all sorts of things that are in the solution including the medication itself and so to get a better understanding of um, you know how these compounds aggregate we use these machine learning models and high throughput uh, screening in the laboratory, coupled also to molecular dynamic simulations to get a better understanding of what are the drugs that would form, you know, these poorly soluble aggregates or some nanostructures and how would that change the way the body can metabolize it and how would that change the way um, the drug can actually have its therapeutic efficacy. Down the line, what we hope to do with this, these kind of simulations is that we can investigate how we can change the medication or how we can change the cocktail that the patient takes and see how this would um, change the way these structures form and whether that would impact the way this drug would act on a patient. You know, I think right now we live in a time where you can read in the newspaper every day about how machine learning and what people call artificial intelligence, AI, you know, is changing our lives and very specifically in the field of medicine, you know, where uh, we have all these headlines um, that AI is changing the way we diagnose people, that AI is changing the way we make medications. And I think what's great about this image is that it's really something, a very concrete example, where, what you, where you can look at these molecular structures and you can see how they come out in the microscopy. And I think you don't need to be a clinician or a molecular physicist, you know, to get an understanding of how the simulation and machine learning is helping us here 
to better understand these processes and change them.